I'd like to get the first um, verse on there. You may be seated. Uh, John 4, 24, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. We're going to focus upon the truth part of this because we're pretty good at doing the spirit part emotionally, in tongues, as the spirit gives utterance. Uh, let's go to the next scripture, Romans 12, 1. We know the scripture, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Next scripture, Hebrews 13, 15. By him, therefore, let us offer this sacrifice of praise to God continually, that is, the fruit of our lips giving thanks to his name. How many people want to be in the will of God? Only that many? Oh, uh, some more. Come on, come on, come on. <laughs> I know I do. i got to raise my hand. You want to be in the will of God, right? You want things to work well for you. You want him to bless your life. You want to be completely at ease with him blessing your life on a ridiculous level. More than you've ever thought possible. Okay? 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 18. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Now, there... To ensure that this works for you, you must believe the codified written word of God. Because it was given there because Jesus said in John 12, 48, every word that proceeds out of my mouth is going to judge you. So we'd be playing a really mean game on telephone 2,000 years from then till now if we didn't have his word accurately written down so that we could rely upon it and, and go by it. Okay? In everything give thanks. It doesn't say for everything give thanks because that would be nutty. To, uh, to be thankful for a dead relative or that your car broke down on the freeway or that you just burned your hand. No, there, there's in everything give thanks. And this is where Romans uh, chapter 5, verses 3 through 5 comes into play. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope, and hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. When we go through our trials and tribulations, in everything give thanks. What God wants us to do, he wants us to recall his works. Even from salvation, which is the most imp important eternal benefit. By his blood we are forgiven. By his stripes we are healed. The eternal before the physical. Everything from our new birth to eternity is just details. In the midst we can see God work in our lives. We can if we put him uh, into play the right way, through faith. Okay. Uh, in recalling his works, it's in the patience phase that we can worship him in truth. We thank him for our salvation. We thank him for giving his blood. We thank him for his grace. We thank him for the faith in our lives that he put there from birth. We thank him for illuminating us with the light which lighteth every man which cometh into the world. <clears throat> Beyond that, we can thank him in his word because he is exactly who he said he is. That we exalt him for being our comforter, for being our deliverer, for being our healer, for being our provider, for being our righteousness. All these things he's in our word before we ever get to seeing the result through the end of the trial or tribulation. Because through it all, he wants to see us exalting him, bragging on him before the face of the enemy. He wants us to see... He wants to see us exalting him and giving him praise already for those things. And then when you've gotten the experience of your first deliverance, then you can go back and say, if God did it for me once, he can do it again. And if he did it for somebody else, he can do it for me because he's no respecter of persons. This is a true fact. Uh, and when we recall his works... The children of Israel forgot his works time and time again and went into sin. He delivered them into bondage, and they stayed there until they remembered the Lord and began to serve him again and began to uh, repent of their works. So if forgetting God's works made him angry, conversely, what do you think? that remembering his works and exalting him and bringing him to remembrance and appreciating them before him. Dad, I really thank you for that Christmas toy you gave me. I thank you for that PlayStation. I really still enjoy it. I really, I'm really thankful instead of you know, being unthankful and asking for other things. Being thankful. 
What happens when we give God praise for the things which he has given us? Have you ever been on the other side of a scripture where you once were on one side of it looking at it? Where Nehemiah 8.10 says, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Oh, okay, so if God gives me joy, he'll strengthen me. Yes. But if we're giving God joy, he's going to step in on our situation. He is going to step in on our situation when we rehearse his good works before him, especially in front of the enemy. It's his will. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Because as Luke 18, 8 says, when the Son of Man cometh, will he find faith on the earth? Will he find that spirit of expectation that something is in the mail? Something good is coming my way. I've prayed it, and I know God's working, even beyond the smoke screen of the devil that he puts in front of your life. Oh, the hopeless smoke, the hopeless black cloud. Oh, nothing's going to get any better. Ah, you know, I, I, this is just hopeless, hopeless situation. No, it's not. Second Chronicles 16.9, the cherry on top of the Sunday right here. This is the proof. He's going to step in on his situation. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in the behalf of him whose heart is perfect toward him. Okay, so perfect. I did the research on that word. It means... Well, it's over here. <laughs> Come on. There it is. Complete, safe, peaceful, perfect, whole, full, at peace. We're at peace because we know that God's working on our situation in the background, in his sovereign timing. Sometimes we don't get it right when we want it. But would you, would you want to set the precedent of being a spoiled brat and get it, everything you want right when you want it, right when you ask for it? God does do that. He does do immediate miracles. I have witnessed many of them in my own life. I have witnessed... Some things happened in a few days. I've happened uh, in a month after I prayed for them. Just this morning, I broke my toe. It was sitting sideways. I got into the shower and hit that stupid little vent in my hot tub, and it, it turned the toe completely sideways. I laid hands on it, and I said, Lord Jesus, I pray that you would put the bones back into place. I pray there would be no pain, no swelling, and that little booger just stayed right in place and right straight, and there's no pain, there's no swelling. <laughs> Among that... He has fixed my car three times, fixed the air conditioner. He has fixed the radiator from leaking. He has fixed, uh, what was the third one? The car pulling to the right constantly, fixed it completely, perfectly, drives straight. He fixed my hot water heater. I call it Lazarus now because after three days it came back to life. It was dead for three days. And my air conditioning unit, I laid hands on it and I said, Air conditioning unit, I pray, Jesus, please heal it. You've done this before. You can do it again. Here we go. Round two. I went and laid hands on the thermostat, and I said, in Jesus' name, come back to life. Within five minutes, it was back up online, putting cold air through the vents. I'm telling you, this stuff works. Faith works. Be blessed, church. And thank God for all things, through all things, for all of his past works, and see him show up in your situation.